I'm a little bit late to the party as far as the solo player builds go. I mean, I've just had so many videos to work on. I guess I never really got around to it until now. Uh, but there are also some advantages to that because we're still so early in the game's life and I'm still learning new things every day. I already know so much more now than I knew a few days ago. And that's hopefully also going to translate in a much more detailed, better solo player build video as well. There's just so much to talk about here. Just a little disclaimer though, this build is mostly going to be for PvE content. If you want a PvP build, just follow the one-shot build that I made a few days ago, because I still believe that that is the best PvP build in the game right now. Uh, but, you know, if you want to play PvE, it's, it's not always the best, it's not always the greatest, and I think that, uh, especially if you're solo, there is a lot more you can do to play with more efficiency. So yeah, uh, let's take a look at this build that I've put together for you. First up, we have the brand sets, or more like brand items, because uh, you'll see that all of the gear pieces that I have, they're all from a different brand set. Uh, so at first sight, this might look like a complete mess of just random pieces put together, but actually, that's not the case. Uh, in a lot of ways, the one-piece bonuses of the brand sets are just as powerful as the two-piece or three-piece bonuses. And I actually found that just picking up six individual one-piece bonuses, uh, it suited best for this build. It almost always netted me more and better stats overall than if I were to commit to a full 3-3 three, three build or a 2-2-2 two, two, two build or something like that, where I still had some stats that didn't really fit the build. So yeah, let's take a look at the bonuses that I went for. On the mask, which is a Sokolov mask, I have the 10% SMG damage, and I'm running this build with Assault Rifle and SMG, so that's why that's useful. The backpack gives me 5% more armor. The chest piece has 10% Assault Rifle damage. The gloves have 10% cooldown reduction. The holster has 7% crit damage, and the knee pads have 8% health. And overall, I'd say that these are pretty nice bonuses, and in my opinion, much better than... Uh, again, committing to any of these brand sets, because do I really need hazard protection or firefly skill power? Do I need hive skill power or pulse skill power? Do I need protection from elites? I guess in some cases, some of these could be nice, like the 20% health on kill or the critical hit damage that I could get on the mask. But uh, I, I wouldn't really say that these picks are better than just getting six individual pieces, which is exactly why I went with six different pieces. Pretty straightforward. Now the talents that I have on the build basically follow two rules. One is get as much damage to elites as possible. And two, try to go for as much sustain as possible. And you'll see that I actually split this pretty evenly right across the middle. With on the left side having hard hitting damage talents. Uh, we have three times 15% damage to elites. We have it on the mask, the chest piece and on the holster. And then on the right side of the build, we have three armor repairing talents. Uh, we have one on the backpack, on the gloves, and on the knee pads. And then I also have Berserk on the chest piece, which is just a ton more damage overall. And Hardened on the backpack, which is a little more uh, tankiness as well. So this is basically a perfect split hybrid build, uh, sort of. It's not perfect yet, but we'll get to the small things that I could still improve upon a little bit later into the video. Now, I don't think that I have to explain the damage to elite talents, because even though on normal difficulty, you'll mostly be fighting red bar mobs and purple mobs, so you're not really gonna notice the damage to elites. But the moment that you turn that difficulty up to hard or even challenge mode, or even when you try to kill those higher level control points, which at some point you're going to need to do, because you want to get those blueprints for your weapons and for the weapon mods, in those cases, you will end up dealing with a lot of elite NPCs, and with my 70% damage to elites in total, well, they just melt down. It makes endgame content so much easier. And then the Berserk on the chest piece is just too good not to have. It is the best DPS talent for gear in the game. And I've already also talked about this in a previous video, so I don't think I have to go over this either. I think it's more interesting to look at the defensive talents because we haven't really talked about those yet ever. First up, there's Hardened, which... It's nothing special, just gives you a little bit more armor, 10%. But then we also have Safeguard, which is an insane talent. This is basically the backbone of any sustained build in PvE. Killing a target grants you 150% bonus to repairing and healing for 20 seconds. So after you get a kill uh, on any NPC or whatsoever, your medkits, your skills, and anything you have that is related to healing or armor repairing, 
it's going to be boosted up by 150 percent and that turns even the little cam launcher that you have that is sort of heals over time it turns it into an absolute monster it's basically like the first eight skill from the division one again but that's not the end of it because you want to combine this talent with three other talents on the build uh, we have clutch on the gloves patience on the knee pads and then preservation on the weapon now what Clutch does, it restores 15% health and 2% armor for every critical hit that you land. Patience gives you 5% armor every second after being in cover for 3 seconds, which you're gonna do a lot in PvE. And Preservation gives you 5% armor every time that you get a kill, and that amount is also increased when you land a headshot. I think it's 7.5% if you land a headshot. So yeah, we have these talents, but then what the safeguard talent does is it basically takes all of those talents and amplifies them by 150% as well. So you should read it more like, for every critical hit you get 5% armor, for every second in cover you get 12.5% armor, and then for every kill that you get, you also get at least 12.5% armor back as a minimum if you don't land that headshot. Just look at the screen here and, and watch my armor bar as I'm playing. I'm just chilling here in cover, just playing PvE, taking damage. I'm melting these mobs because I have the Berserk talent active. And I just have so much damage to elites. But at the same time, I just have so much passive healing. And that's why this build is so great. You're basically the damage dealer, but you're also your own healer. It's just fantastic for PvE and especially for solo players. Now the stat rolls on my gear are all pretty much spread out evenly between armor, uh, more damage, maybe some cooldown reduction for the skills. I even have some more damage to elites on the mask as a stat roll. Uh, and I would say that for a hybrid build like this, most of the stats work. The only stat that I would avoid is maybe skill power, because with the sustain and the damage that you already have, you don't need buffed up skills. Uh, the healing cam launcher is already super, super strong with the safeguard talent, and with all the damage to elites that you have, you don't need a seeker mind to kill an NPC for you. And also, uh, the skill mods are still bugged and currently require way too much skill power to unlock so unlocking those skill mods is extremely hard to do in the first place if not impossible so if you have let's say a thousand skill power or two thousand skill power well good for you but that's not going to do anything it's just uh it's just a dead stat so to speak and since we're talking about skill power i think i already mentioned this a couple times but of course i'm using the chem launcher healing skill it has a very low cooldown it has three charges so you can use it three times in a row or spread it out to your liking and then the secondary skill that I use is the, the Revive Hive, which basically instantly revives me whenever I go down. And I don't go down a lot, but there's always going to be that one time where you fuck up. And then it's really, really nice to have that thing auto-revive you instead of having to play uh, the thing you just failed again. The secondary weapon is also something we haven't looked at yet. It is still that same SMG with strength as a main talent, which is also something I've already talked about in a previous video. I think this is just a ridiculously strong talent, getting up to 200% critical hit damage. And having that on an SMG is crazy good, because you can build an SMG in a way to always have 60% critical hit chance, because uh, you can get critical hit chance on all the weapon mods for the SMG, except for maybe the magazine slot, because you want the extended magazine there. Just take a look at it. It comes with 15% critical hit chance as a base, and then I have a critical hit chance scope, a critical hit chance suppressor, a critical hit chance laser pointer, and the extended mag. And combined with the stat rolls that I already have on my gear, that puts me at uh, the 60% critical hit chance cap. It's actually 61% that I have, but hey, we can let the 1% go to waste. It's not that big a deal, right? And remember, crit chance doesn't only buff strength, but it's also very good with the talent that I have on the glove, clutch, which then gives me 5% more armor for every critical hit. So the moment an NPC runs up to me and I'm about to die, I swap to the SMG, I just burst him down and I get almost my whole armor back at the same time. The assault rifle uh, doesn't have that much crit chance. It's only sitting at, I think, 15%. So the Assault Rifle is unfortunately not going to have that much value. But on the other hand, I've got some more damage to Elites on the Assault Rifle, and it has a much bigger mech as well. And it has damage to health, which is extremely powerful versus rep mobs. That's why I like the Assault Rifle so much. Especially if you're playing solo, you got the damage to health for the rep mobs, and the damage to Elites for the yellow mobs. Which then means that the purple mobs are probably going to be the most tanky. And with this build, even those NPCs aren't going to be tanky at all. You basically got it all covered. The specialization that I use is uh, the Demolitionist one. It's for two reasons mainly. First up, for the special med kit. It only repairs 70% of your uh, armor, but then gives you 100% increased weapon handling for 15 seconds. 
Uh, and then after those 15 seconds, it repairs the remaining 30%. Now this is okay. In, in itself, it's nothing special, but you can also combine this with, again, the safeguard talent that I have on the backpack because that amplifies the medkit by 150%. So it repairs my armor bar up to 100% anyway, even though it says that it's only going to do it for 70%. Then it gives me the 100% increased weapon handling, and then I get another 75% of my armor back just like that, just for free. Combining these two, it's, it's a crazy good combination. And then also the grenade launcher is just really, really good for PvE. I feel that the grenade launcher is so much better than any of the other two specialization weapons. It's just crazy good for clearing a whole bunch of mobs that just spawned. If you're fast enough, you can blow up a whole wave before they can even do anything back. It's just crazy. And then also, I guess another added benefit is having 15% SMG damage, which also comes with the demolitionist specialization. There are still some things that I could uh, do better to make this build better. For example, you'll see that uh, on my gear, I don't have mods in all of my gear items yet. Uh, this isn't because I don't have the mods, it's because those mod slots are only for offensive mods. And I actually have to stay below 5 offensive stat rolls to have strength be active on the SMG. And this is such a powerful talent, I think I actually want this to remain active. Because with 60% crit chance and then 200% crit damage... Is there anything in this game you're not going to melt? So yeah, I'm still grinding for gear pieces to replace my current ones that are pretty identical, uh, but then have defensive or utility mod slots uh, in there instead of offensive ones. I don't even know if they exist. I don't even know if I can swap enough things around uh, on the build to, to make it to where it works like that, to where I have only uh, defensive or utility mod slots. I really need those spreadsheets soon, data miners. Come on, hurry up. Uh, but yeah, other than those mods, I'd say that this build is pretty solid. Uh, I haven't seen a better solo player build yet, at least. And if I don't find any, this is probably even what I'm going to be using going into World Tier 5. And potentially also play the Raid with. Because, yeah, it's good in solo, but it's also really good in a group. It's basically a jack of all trades this build that does everything really well. Except for having strong skills, I guess. And that pretty much sums up the video, guys. As always, I'll see you guys later. Or... Like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.